Do you need to create a simple photo montage? Well, let me show you how. Hey y'all, my name is Adrienne. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I make tutorials on video editing and I have some more free tips and resources that I've linked down in the description box in case you're interested. And now let's get into that photo montage tutorial. As you can see, I have my project open in Premiere. I'm gonna go down here to this icon. It says new item. I'm gonna select a new sequence. We're gonna close broadcast. We're not doing that. HD 1080p. HD 1080p 23.976 frames per second. Name your sequence and click OK. Now we're gonna go back up to the project panel and click new bin. We can name this photos. I'm gonna select that bin, go up to file, all the way down to import. Select all of my photos and click import. And now you can see they are all inside of this bin under photos in my project. Now I suggest coming down here in your project panel and clicking on icon view. And then if you double click on this bin that you've created, you can see all of your pictures. You get a preview of all of them. Now, if you have your project panel selected, you can hit the tilde key and that makes your project panel full screen. And that way you can see every single picture all at the same time. Now, if you look at all of your pictures, you can move them around, reorder them, and then you can see what order they're going to appear in your photo montage. If for some reason, the order that you've selected for your pictures isn't saving, come down here to these three lines and click it and make sure that user order is checked. And that way any changes that you make will then be saved. Now that you have all the pictures in the order that you want them for your photo montage, let's change the speed or the duration that every photo will be on screen. Here in the project panel, I want you to click Command A that selects every picture. Hover your mouse over one of the pictures, right click and select speed duration. You see here, this is called time code 00004429. That means that each photo is going to be displayed for four seconds and 29 frames. Let's change this and make each picture displayed for five seconds. So you're gonna type five, zero, zero. That's gonna give you five seconds and hit okay. Now press the tilde key and you can see your entire workspace. All of your photos are still selected in the project panel. So you're going to drag them and drop them onto your timeline. As you scrub along the timeline, you can see that they are not all framed correctly. You can see these bars on either side of each picture. The next thing we wanna do is fix that. Down on your timeline, I want you to select all the photos, right click and go down to scale to frame size. As you scrub through the timeline, you can see that every photo has been scaled in an identical way, but now they're all teeny tiny <laughs> in the program monitor. And this is definitely not what you want for your photo montage. So let's fix that. I want you to scrub through the pictures and find the size that most of your photos are. So I would say most of these, like this one. So I'm going to scale every single picture on the timeline to this photo's size. So I'm gonna select that picture, go over to the effect controls panel, open up motion, open up scale, 
and in, increase that until it fills the frame. There we go. Then I come down to the timeline. I right click. I select copy. And then I'm going to highlight all the other photos. Right click and select paste attributes. When I do that, I want to make sure motion is checked. And then I hit OK. And now every photo is scaled to the same size as that first one. As you can see, there are some pictures that still have bars on the side like that. Don't worry, we'll address that in a minute. First, I want to add a transition between each photo so it's not a hard cut from picture to picture in your montage. Today, we're just gonna use a cross dissolve. There are a few simple steps that you can take that will allow you to apply the same transition at the same length of time across every single cut on your timeline. So let's go through those now. I want you to go up to Premiere Pro, Settings, Timeline, You'll see up here at the top, video transition default duration, 30 frames. Let's change it to seconds. It's gonna be one second. Perfect. Come down here and click OK. Now we're gonna go up to the effects panel. Open up video transitions. Open up dissolve and you'll see cross dissolve. This little blue box around it means that it is your default video transition. If you don't see that, select it, right click, and just hit set selected as default transition. Good. All right, now come down to your sequence. Select all of the photos on your timeline. Up to sequence, apply video transition. Now come down to your timeline and click and you'll see a transition on every single cut on your timeline. I want you to go all the way up to the start, zoom in, and I want you to delete that transition. And I want you to delete that transition and then go to the end and do the same thing. Delete the transition at the end. Now, if we watch this, it looks Nice. There's a cross dissolve to the next picture, a cross dissolve to the next one. And that looks okay. But what if we added a Ken Burns type effect and we did a slow push in on every photo just to give it a little bit of movement? Put your playhead over your first photo on your timeline. Go over to your effects controls and move your playhead to the very beginning of the clip. And now hit the stopwatch next to scale. That sets a keyframe at that size. Now go over to the playhead up in the effect controls panel all the way to the end of this clip. And I'm just going to change the scale by five. So it's 119 and a half, let's say 120. So I'm going to change it to 125. That sets a keyframe there. Now back down on your timeline, right click on that clip, select copy, select all the images on your timeline, right click, paste attributes. Again, you want motion to be selected and hit Okay. Now you can see there's this nice subtle move on every single picture. As I'm scrubbing through, you can see that I still have some transparency on either side of a lot of these pictures. So let's fix that now. I want you to go down to your timeline and select every photo. Hit option on your keyboard and then drag a copy of all of those photos up onto the second layer. All of the photos on the first layer are still selected. Right click on those and select nest. Now you have a nested sequence that is identical to the second layer. Find a photo that has 
a lot of, bl of blank space on either side. I'm just gonna go with the one that's in the program monitor now. Make sure your nested sequence is selected. Go over to effect controls and scale up just your nested sequence until that whole background is gone. You can see with the photos that I selected, we still have some transparency on either side. So we're going to move the position over to the right to cover that. And then I'm going to select everything on my timeline, move it up. I'm going to duplicate the nested sequence and move it down. And then in this case, I'm going to move the position over to the left. So now all of that transparent background is covered by a photo. If your photos cover the entire frame, if you're able to scale your picture up to 200% and it covers the entire frame, then you don't need to create a second nested sequence and move the position. That's just a particular situation that I'm in with these photos. So now I want you to go over to the effects panel and search for the Gaussian blur. There it is. Apply it to both of your nested sequences or only one nested sequence if you only need one. Come over to your effects control panel and you'll see blurriness. Bring that way up and make sure that repeat edge pixels is selected. So I'll make it 50 and I'll make the second one the same. So now we can watch our photo montage. It looks pretty good. All of the transparent backgrounds are covered by a blurry version of the same photo. You have a nice, subtle Ken Burns zoom in on each picture, and you have an identical transition of a cross dissolve between every single photo. You're done with your montage. Now you need to export. I want you to go down to your timeline, go to the end of your montage, and click the O button. That sets an in and an out point, and that tells Premiere exactly what it is that you want exported. Now come up here to the top, click Export. Be sure to give it a name. Be sure to select your location, and you can export simply match source adaptive high bitrate. That's fine. Your format should be H.264. Come down here and click Export. And that's it for me. I hope this was helpful. And that's it for me. I hope this was helpful for you. Give this video a thumbs up if it was. Uh, leave a comment below if you have anything you'd like to, any mood. And that's it for me. I hope that, and that's it for me. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in the next one.